Hey everyone, it's Amy Sherman from M Live and Michigan's Best, and it's my favorite day of the week. It's beer of the week time. I can't wait to share our special pick with you guys. This brewery is a fun one, and I'm excited to have them here because they're celebrating their five year anniversary, and that is a big deal in the brewing world. It's really a big deal in any business world, so I think it's pretty cool. So I'm happy that they're here. Please help me welcome. Hi guys, I've got Mr. Buck Dubro, who is the brand manager, and then I've got Ben Tabor, who's the owner of Grand Armory Brewing, located in Grand Haven. Welcome, guys. Hi. How are we doing? <laughs> doing great. Come on, let's have some enthusiasm. It's time for beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good to see you. Hello, M Live World. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, I am excited to hear more about Grand Armory. I've gotten to visit you guys in Grand Haven a few times, had your beers lots of times. Um, but I guess I wasn't aware that you're celebrating your five-year anniversary. That's that's a big deal, isn't it? It's exciting, for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Ben, tell us a little bit about the history of Grand Armory. How did you guys get started? Why did you pick Grand Haven? So, um, I call in Grand Armory Brewing with uh, Ryan Andrews, who is a Spring Lake native here. And we were, uh, we call ourselves aggressive home brewers. So we were brewing every single weekend. And it got to the point where uh, our, my entire basement was full of carboys of beer. My wife said, you know, you guys got to stop this or get a license. And we figured that was carte blanche to go ahead and start looking for buildings and uh, make this happen. That was on a Friday. By Sunday, we were peeking in every building in Grand Haven, you know, what, what could work for us here. And we were fortunate enough that this, uh, the armory building in Grand Haven was available and it had the branding, everything wrapped up all into one. We became Grand Armory Brewing in our minds that week. And uh, we pushed, we pushed really hard, but it, it was a beautiful, it, it is a beautiful space that we couldn't afford at the time. And we were really fortunate to make a relationship with uh, Aldea Coffee, who was also looking for a brick and mortar at that same time. So we were all able to share chairs, tables, spaces. They were open in the morning, we were open in the evening, and we collaborated during the day. It's uh, It's been quite a ride. Well, Ben, I think for people who haven't been out to, to the Armory building, explain it a little bit, because it's a, it's like a mixed use space. So you have the brewery there, you also have the coffee shop. It's, it's kind of an interesting concept, especially for a place like Grand Haven. Definitely. I mean, we were definitely the first around this area to do it. Um, we collaborated with not only Aldea Coffee, but with Righteous Barbecue. And we are very complimentary businesses. We, uh, we share a lot of the same customers that literally come in in the morning. They might bring their laptop and have some coffee. By lunchtime, they're eating some Righteous Barbecue. And then they're telling friends to come down for live music and have some beers with them by the evening. A lot of our patrons literally hang out here all day. <laughs> <laughs> from morning to night it's like that's perfect i love that <laughs> if you're just joining us we are going to be getting to beer of the week soon and i'm going to give you a little flash of what it might be coming up in a little bit but we're talking with the boys from grand armory brewing located in grand haven uh but with beers and distribution throughout the state right uh now buck you are you're doing um you're in charge of, of the brand and selling and all that stuff how far are you guys distributing your beers now across michigan so we're a statewide distribution with uh, eight different distributing networks. Um, and yeah, pushing out uh, four core brands, seasonal and uh, specialties. Quite regularly, different unique stuff, keeping it fresh, keeping it clean. Do you guys have kind of, and either one of you can answer this, um, maybe Ben, since you're, you started as the home brewer, but what is your brewing philosophy at Grand Armory? Do you guys have a certain approach that, that you take to the beers? Well, we tried to do a hybrid. Um, when we had originally opened, uh, I think like a lot of breweries, we said, we're gonna focus on classic styles and clean flavors. And after time, you have a really solid set of base beers and you say, I wanna add tangerine to that. I wanna add apricot to that. And we started having fun with a lot of our brews. So I'd say we do about half and half. We have a, a wide variety of traditional brews and then we have a lot of experimental brews that are a lot of fun for us as well. Yeah, you definitely have some interesting uh, flavors uh, that you put together, and, and we'll definitely be um, talking about more of those in a few minutes. But why don't we get to our pick for Beer of the Week, and it is from Grand Armory Brewing. Boys, it is... Weez in the Juice, juice buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you practice that? Because that was good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good <fun> regularly, <laughs> 
<laughs> so this is um, your version of a, a juicy IPA is what it says on, on the label. Would you go as far as to say that this is a New England style IPA? So we don't market it as a New England. Ours actually pours pretty crystal clear. Um, the reason it's a juicy IPA is because it's a very low bitterness, very tropical drink. And it, this is one of the beers that was created before it was named. Sometimes we have such a great name that we say we have to brew a beer that'll fit that style. But this was quite the opposite where we brewed a, a very juicy IPA and my partner Ryan took a drink of it and said, he's in the juice, buddy. <laughs> and we all, everyone in the world knew that it was going to be our new, next big beer. Oh my gosh, I love it. It is really, it's actually really clear. Yeah, it is. It's definitely not a, a hazer here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. Um, so tell me about how you're making this this beer. Um, what what kind of hops are you using? What uh, I'm looking, I really like your label too. It's very colorful. It looks like a tie-dye t-shirt. <laughs> tie-dye t-shirt with a big slushy machine in the middle. Uh, oh, I didn't even see that. <laughs> We're 90s kids and we paid homage to the uh, Encino Man movie with Pauly Shore where he wheezes the juice right out of the slushy machine. <laughs> <laughs> That's old school. I like it. <laughs> Uh, Reason the Juice is a, a low bitterness IPA with uh, mosaic and citra hops, and it is uh, aggressively dry hopped at three different stages in the brewing process. I haven't had this one in a while, and I like like that you said it's a very low bitter hop or bitter IPA, and it is. It's so smooth, and it's there's no punch in the nose. There's no like it's that's a really easy drinking beer. I would call this a gateway juice so you know, it's our ipa converter when someone says i don't drink ipas we give them a reason and we can generally get somebody on the ipa train yeah that's really really delicious boys i really like that why aren't you having some with me come on <laughs> <laughs> See, cheers to beer of the week <laughs> this has to be one of your um I, one it's one of your flagship beers but it has to be one of your most popular beers i would think it is absolutely our most popular beer Oh, it is the most popular beer. Well, thank goodness we picked it. <laughs> it's, uh, we just doubled down in 2020 in our quality control program. So um, as a sales rep, how um, how nice it is to go into the market confidently selling beer, knowing that when you taste it uh, this time, the next time, and the time after, it's going to taste the same just as you remember trying it the first time when you didn't like IPAs. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. You know, that's a great point, though, um, Buck, that consistency in brewing is one of the hardest things to achieve and is often very hard for a new brewery to really kind of get under wraps. So it's good to hear that after five years, you guys are fo still focusing on that consistent quality. Well, and especially during this pandemic, you know, I mean, uh, money's tight. And when you go in to buy a beer after a long day, you want it to taste just like you remember it. And, um, you know, 10 bucks for a six pack, you know, you want it to taste the, taste the same as always was. So, uh, you know, we, we're, we pride ourselves in, in uh, making sure we manage the production properly and continue to invest in the tools that um, really put us at a place to succeed. Well, let's talk a little bit about what you guys have been doing during the pandemic. I know it's been hard for a lot of breweries either to adjust to, you know, not having food or not being able to do takeout. What have you guys been doing and how have you adjusted now that things have started to open up again? Well, in, uh, I'll let Ben talk about the tap room um, in a moment, but um, in regards to the pandemic, I mean, we see, you know, a lot of breweries are seeing influx sales, obviously with package here. Um, and I want to just tip my hat to all of our, distributing partners, um, as well as all the, you know, the, from the driver that drops off grain in the morning to the uh, distributor that's stacking the shelves at the end of the day, um, it's combined effort. Um, so that, you know, it's blood, sweat and tears, we call it, um, or beer, sweat and tears, um, <laughs> to beer, blood, sweat and beers. There we go. Um, <laughs> to ensure at the end of the day, you know, after you're done with your long day, you can have a, a pint, um, and re ready to go for whatever you had to deal with during that day. So, um, you know, we, we've been we've been hustling. Um, we actually doubled our production volume uh, during the pandemic here. Wow! Uh, maintain, um, you know, the uh, the um, 
they want the, the demand, you know. So especially with Weez and the Juice, this is 60% of our sales statewide. Um, definitely the horse of our brewery, um, and you can you can see why. In regard to the uh, tap room here, uh, I know Ben's been busy every day, um, you know, maintaining with whatever regulations we have to, we get hit with every couple of weeks. So, um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the pandemic has been definitely difficult. It's weird. Um, <laughs> you know, and I'd say we've, from the very beginning, we strove to hit the highest marks as far as um, safety and PPP or PPE and um, other things that we had to put in place for it to keep our staff and our patrons safe. So we, we had, before it was mandated, started spacing tables, requiring masks when it was just a suggestion, things of that nature. Um, and we were very fortunate. The city of Grand Haven actually allowed us to use eight parking places in the back of our building to turn into a beer garden, something that we've wanted for five years and never had the out space, outdoor space to acquire. So silver lining, I guess, um, you know, we get to sit out in the sun outside and have a couple of reasons, which is really nice, but it's, it's definitely been odd. And we're, uh, we're pretty blessed to like Buck said, be able to uh, grow from a seven barrel brew house to a 15 barrel brew house during the pandemic because everyone's drinking at home. There's package sales are up and people are boozing. So thank you. <laughs> I call it yeah. force. I do what I can. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty incredible that you jumped that that big of a barrel, a barrel system up to a 15. That's that's pretty awesome. I mean, that puts you at a whole nother level as a, as a brewery um, for the future. And if anything good can come out of the pandemic, that's, that's one thing. And I do love, um, I was in Grand Haven a couple of weeks ago and I love, on what the city has been doing, allowing these outdoor spaces to flourish on, you know, variety of streets throughout downtown. And it's, it's yeah. something that probably should have happened a really long time ago. And how cool that it is happening now. Absolutely. No, we've heard nothing but positive response from uh, tourists and locals alike. Um, everybody likes the walking town that this has become. It's, it's fun. It's, you know, we live in a vacation town and everyone's getting to soak up the sun here a little bit. It's, it's nice. That's awesome. Okay, well, Buck, let's talk about a couple of the other brands that you guys have, a couple of your other flagship beers um, that people might see on the shelves across Michigan. I know I ran out and grabbed one to try, but you have a few other ones that you were gonna um, share with our readers. Yeah, while we're on the uh, Weezing topic, uh, this year, 2020, we uh, released a segue series uh, called The Grindage. Just running on that Ollie Shore train there. Um, we've got Started with a mango in March, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're on to pineapple currently. Um, and then strawberry kiwi comes out two weeks, uh, August eighth, around that time frame. So um, all these will go through September, and then we'll release all three in October as a variety pack. Oh, as that's a variety. fun! So these are these are Weez and the Juice variants, where we've we've fruited each one differently for a two month release. Hello. I think the pineapple one sounds awesome. That I can just imagine that that flavor would go so beautifully with these in the juice. It'd be a really nice combo. It is nice. M mango is my favorite right now, but the strawberry kiwi that's about to come out, I think, is probably going to take my heart. It's it's gorgeous. <laughs> True love. <laughs> yeah, okay, well, you better keep keep one can of each for me to try next time I come out to Grand Haven because I couldn't find those. Uh, in my hometown of Grand Rapids at this time. I'm sure they're here, but I just, I didn't find them. They're, um, they're hiding, they're going quick. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I did grab the, um, your raspberry ale, which is called yeah. Mother Schmucker, which is also a great name. I want to be in your naming like meetings. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Amy, it goes great with our uh, peanut butter stout, the nut of your business. Oh, together make a PB and J? Not your business, Mother Schmucker. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> cracking up at me. <laughs> so what? So this is a raspberry ale, and it's got a great color. Each tree blonde, and then that gets raspberries in secondary fermentation to give it that beautiful red color and that nice but not too sweet flavor. Um, it's not syrupy. It's very drinkable. You still know it's beer, but it's it's uh. It's fruity. It's, it's fruity. You're, you're right, but it's not sweet at all, which I appreciate. I don't. I don't like the beers that are cloying or coat my tongue with, you know, sugary afterdo or you know, tracks and all that stuff. That's nice. 
And to go with the, the nut of your business, perfect. <laughs> we're, we're both at 5% ABV. Uh, we understand how much Michigan likes to or enjoys to drink beer. So uh, being able to enjoy a few of these, uh, kept cold, kept fresh, um, easy drinking, and everyone wins. I like that. What did Weez and the Juice come in at for ABV? It's a 6.5. Just a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Pocket, though. Just a little bit more. <laughs> Go but, um, the wheeze and the juice, we decided to make a little bit more accessible at the 6.5 again, so you could have a few of them. I like that. Now, Amy, yeah. I don't know what Buck created over here, but the nut of your business, Mother Schmucker, which did you do at about a 50% ratio? I did a 50% ratio. So this is another thing that's kind of fun. A lot of our patrons come in and they have all their own ratios of that they like their nut of your business mother schmucker created here, whether it's 25, 75, 50, 50. So it's kind of a personalized experience for everybody. And that's why we put the suggestion on the side of the can that it pairs well with the nut of your business. I like that. I remember that when I was at the brewery one time at the tap, at the tap room, they recommended that I, could create my own little combo, which I thought is fun. More breweries should do that. I think it's kind of interesting. It creates a whole nother beer, right? Mm -hmm. And Very we nice. have the nut of your business on nitro at the tap room here as well. So, you know, doing the black and tan or black and red, red you know. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrate beer, you know. I like to say, you know, you don't have to let the science or the fun end at the brewery. You come come out to the bar and start mixing stuff up. You're your own brewer at, your brewer at that point, eh? <laughs> I won't tell you now. It's a free for all at Grand Armory. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> well, Grand Armory, you're celebrating um, your five year anniversary. What can people look forward to coming out of your brewery in the next five years? Well, we hope for continued growth. I mean, we're kind of one day at a time, especially, you know, things like the, the pandemic kind of put it into perspective that we're just got to keep chugging along at the rate we are here. Um, we've had consistent growth. When we when we opened five years ago, we had a, a modest goal of 365 barrel that year. We said if we sell two kegs a day, we'll keep the lights on here. And uh, we've sold more than 5,000 barrel the last two years in a row. You know, we just kind of keep counting our blessings and we're fortunate to be in this awesome, fun industry. And look, just to add on that, um, we have a real small brew house, about uh, five, seven guys back there uh, making the dream happen. Very dedicated uh, crew. Uh, starts early, ends late. And they're, they're maintaining the flow for us. I wish they could be here as well. But uh, they are busting butt at the brewery. So uh, getting that wheezing back out to you. <laughs> we thank you for that. <laughs> and all of Michigan will thank you because it's our pick for beer of the week. It's Weezing the Juice from Grand Armory Brewing located in Grand Haven, Michigan. But the beer is located on shelves all across the state. Guys, if people want to get more information about Grand Armory, learn more about your beers, figure out uh, maybe a plan a visit to see you, where should they go? GrandArmoryBrewing.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram. We keep constantly updated and you'll also, you'll get new beer alerts, find out about our live music and other events that happen at our tap room and outside the distribution. That's awesome. Well, Buck Dubro, Ben Tabor from Grand Armory, thank you so much for joining me on Beer of the Week. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you, Amy. Cheers. If you want to get more information about Beer of the Week, you want to head to mlive.com. <laughs>